Hi. In this session, we'll discuss about the concept of designing a web IDI with a dependent LOE. So these are the six step-by-step -step approach we'll be following to execute this particular functionality. The first basic thing is what we would like to achieve is we would like to design a web IDI LOE which will display supplier details in the first column and which will display supplied side details for the selected first column in the second column. So nothing but we want to design a web IDI LOE web adi so in the first column it will display supply details and for the selected supplier so in the second column you can select supplier site for the based on the previous supplier column okay so now what we do is just consider a custom table which have two columns one is uh, the table name is xxram underscore supplier underscore details which is having two columns p underscore supplier and p underscore supplier site okay so create a table so this will create a table in your app schema and then the next step is we have to register the table so that the web idi can recognize the table so for that one what you do is just call this particular sql script which will register the table name so what you do is just mention your table name and then you know like application name it all depends upon so when you want when you're selecting when you're creating a web idi you need to mention for which application you want to select the table name so based on that you just mention the appropriate application name so once you execute this particular script this particular script will register your table for a particular application okay so this is the first step in the first step we have two optional two steps the first thing is creation of a database table and the registration of a table and the next step is registering registering the web idi interface so now let us go to desktop integration manager so to work with web idi we require two responsibilities one is desktop integration and other one is a desktop integration manager now click on create integrator so now here we need to mention the integrator name internet name all those things so here what you do is make sure that you mention your integrator name with a lesser number of characters because generally like what happens is when you're creating the components the dependent components at runtime using plc call api it will lead to a it will lead to a different set of issues so better thing is just mention your integrate your integrator name with just lesser number of characters and i'll just say x and now xsd nothing but x is my custom generally whenever you create any custom company you start with x sd means supplier details so i'll just go with the same name for the integrator name as well as the eternal name now here need to mention the application name so here i'll select application name as application object library now here make sure that you select the display and create document page so that it will allow us to create the document after creation of our integrator so now our integrator name is xsd okay so just make a note of that integrator name is xsd x supplier details now here the security rule just select create document yeah create document should be surface click on add click next mention the interface name and now interface type is table and mention the custom table name which we created just now select the table name so if you don't register the table will not be available here if you just try to check the lov make sure that the table should be available else else you were what you say like uh, we cannot perform the registration of this particular interface so now just click on apply so now it has to show the list of columns which are available in the table now here if you observe it selected the table now it has you know like uh, it means that our table got selected just click on this one so it will show the list of columns which are available in the table which we selected right the two columns as of now there is nothing to change at this level okay just click on next and here also there is nothing to change it now click on next and in the uploader we just need to create from temp uploader what you do is just make sure that you create the uploader from the template just click on create here now just this but in this one this but last parameter is not required just delete this one and click on submit so now the web adi integration creation is done so nothing but which step the second step is done this is our integrated name now we have to register table component lob for supplier so here if you observe for our web adi we have two components one is supplier and other one is supplier site so for the supplier we want to show the list of suppliers so nothing but we generally follow with the table lob and for supplier side we have to follow with the java approach so for so for this one what we do is the best thing is go with the 
PL SQL, I mean, what you do is perform the registration using PL SQL API. So there is an option where you can create from the front end also. Nothing but let us say we can create the LOV, the table LOV from here, create component, manage components. So, but you know, like uh, as far as I understand, like I just searched a lot, a lot on this and just came to know that PL SQL API is the best approach for creating components. So now what we have to do is, so here I provided there are two SQL script. One is create component, create table LOV. So the create table LOV, what you have to do is you need to mention your interface code. So your interface code is not similar, not same as your integrator name. Just what you do is just try to validate that. You'll get a lot number of issues in this kind of scenario. Just try to find out what is your interface name. Okay, I'll just go with order by creation date so we can just easily get what is our interface name. Now, can you see? So our interface name generally starts with our integrator name followed by some name. So this generally this particular Oracle ERP will automatically suffix that. Okay, so just this is our interface code now. So here I'll just mention my interface code. So your interface code always starts with your in integrator name followed by this particular X, I, X integrator underscore NDF1. And here in this one, we have to know, you need to mention what is the database column name. So the database column name is P underscore supplier. And here what we want to do is we want to select two columns from our AP supplier table. One is segment one which is our vendor number and another one is vendor name so we want to store vendor number in our supplier table p underscore sup column this is my database column and these two columns are from my ap supplier table segment one and vendor name so here you just need to need to mention id id column meaning column and the table column here and then the window caption that's it okay so just try to execute this particular script completed perfectly so now what you can do is you can try to validate now go to the manage integrator and try to search whether that particular component got created at co our column level or not. XSD. Click on update. Now at the yeah, click on next. So P and supplier, just click on update here. It has to show our component name, right? Table component. And can you see segment one, vendor name, AP supplier, and all these things. So it created a component with this particular name, component for followed by your interface name okay now if you try to check for supplied site as of now for supplied site you will not find anything here because we have not yet created the mapping component for the supplied site as of now right so once we create we can see that information also at this level so close this one now what we do is for the supplier site we have to follow a java approach so for this particular java approach we required three java files okay so these are three java files which we require so actually the third step this should be our third step and this should be our fourth step okay because without having java file what is the what is the need of creating the table component right so you can just consider this way so this is our third step in the third step we have three java files so let me explain what are they the first one is your sql file then the validator and the component so in our table component we will be upload will be we should mention the component java file name and the remaining java files will will get called from this component file so Actually, what we refer to is we refer to component file from the component file. It will call validator from the validator it will call the SQL file. So in the SQL file, we need to mention your supplied site query. In the SQL, in the SQL Java file, we have to mention our supplied site query. So in the supplied site query, nothing but you know, like when you create a when you click on supplied site LOV in the Excel sheet, what values you want to show and what values you want to copy to your Excel sheet. So that is what it is all about. So let us observe the supplied site Java file. So observe here. So in this one, if you observe in the string buffer, so we just need to declare. See, don't try to understand everything here. So it's a predefined Java file which will be available. We just need to understand where we have to modify what. Okay. So the expectation is that we'll be getting a supplier ID or supplier number or supplier supplier uh, what you say vendor name or vendor number or whatever it is. It all depends upon how do you want to pass from your first LOV. So in from the first LOV, we would like to pass a vendor number to this one so that what we can do just observe here. I just mentioned sorry vendor name you're passing. So we just may need to mention the appropriate condition here. So this particular query will give you the list of supplier sites based on your supplier name. So but on what basis this is passing supplier name just observe here. So the table LOV we just now we registered here create table LOV. So what is the ID column we mentioned segment ones so which this will get stored in our this will get stored in our database table p underscore svp and vendor name the meaning column vendor name right this is getting passed to this particular one this vendor name is getting passed to our supplied side query okay 
This is the first particular SQL file and then the site name validator. So here I don't think you will find okay And here in this one we just we need to mention what is our parent database column name p underscore scp is a parent database uh, What is it the first the first lob database column name p underscore scp this is the only place where you need to modify and the coming to component it there is a lot number of places where you need to modify the first thing is here yeah so when you perform a searching like nothing but when you open the vendor site lob we want we want to we'd like to provide what number of columns you want to provide and what searching you want to provide so there are two columns one is address line and other one is a vendor site code right if you just see the sql query here what will we mention? We mentioned address line, address line, city, and there are a lot number of columns, right? Address line, city, and state. Okay. Now here also, if you observe, we would have mentioned those things here. Okay. So just mention them appropriately. What are the columns you want? If you don't want to provide any column, you can just ignore. Try to mention only particular column which you require in the second LOV. And after that, yeah. Right, so somewhere you'll find vendor site code. Okay, that's it. So we just need to mention the filtering criteria. Okay, nothing to change as of now. Yeah, yeah, that's it. And once you perform compile, just do the compilation and move these particular three Java files to Java top. Move these three Java files to Java top. So let me show you. Okay, move these three Java files to Java top. One minute. Okay, this one will be test component. Yeah, so these three Java files one is in the component folder, another one is a scale folder, another one is a validator folder. Okay, these three Java files. Now Okay, so once this is done, the next step is registration of a table component LOV. Right? Creation table component LOV we have done, right? Table component LOV we have done. Create Java files we have done. And now what is what is the thing is we have to register. I think I just missed the step here. Register. I can mention Java or maybe supplier site LOV. Yeah, Java supplier site LOV. Okay, this is a fifth fifth step. Okay, maybe I'm just confusing you, but let me clarify this one. You can just mention like this. This is a third step, fourth step, and this is a fifth step. Create. Java supplier side LOV. So for this one, I have the file. This one. This is my file. Okay. Create Java LOV. So let me open that. Create Java LOV. So here also just mention your interface code name. So we just now got the interface code name. Right. This is our interface code name. And here in this table also you can observe. We can find out that information. In this one. Can you see XSD integrator interface one and you can find out your interface column name here. Okay, supplied site. Now here mention the interface column name, the database column name followed by the Java component class name. Here we have to mention the component class name. Okay. And then followed by the window caption, the table columns. Nothing but what columns you are getting from the LOV. Vendor site code name and address. And we need to mention the headers here for headers for that and the table select column. So which particular value you want to select, right? So we would, the I mean to say like generally like when in the table you need to mention which column you want to store, right? So if you mention only one column, the first column will get copied to your supplier side table called table column name. Okay. Now execute this one. Completed. Now check out the integrator here. We have to find out that, right? Sorry. Where is that supplier side, right? The first one. Can you see? Not yet. What you do is just try to refresh here. Maybe it was not refreshed. 
yeah now it is trying to reload let's try now right the validation type java and now it created a component with this name right component with this name now the web adi registration stuff is almost done we have done as of now five steps the next step is we need to create a layout and we need to create a document web adi document so what you do is now go to desktop integrator manager level is done now the next step is desktop integration so next step of integration define layout xsd xsd x supply details go yeah there is nothing there is no layout as of now just create a layout click on create mention the layout name supplied site details right select all the columns apply right now create document stuff is done next thing is click on cancel here now create the yeah create layout is done create document now create layout is done now click on create document yeah xsd yeah xsd next next create document now this is our web document just click on open and let us see what happens now now it is loading the data right now let us say yeah if you observe here it got loaded with finer records i'll just go with g percentile so that you know i'll get more data generic electrical generic electric now selected supplier site right g e yeah second call i'll select other one this time right american telephone at and select right now can you see you can identify that we got different entries now right at and canada i'll just select maybe we got multiple records it could be the query issue or maybe it is a real data issue just check out that right now i just selected two records click on add ins oracle upload upload perfect two rows successfully uploaded click on close now observe what got stored in the database table select this particular table now so can you see so maybe this would have been yeah which one actually there is an existing record i guess yeah, these are two two records which are new now it is storing supplier number right but here it is showing supplier name it all depends upon how do you want to design right but here it is storing supplier site code right so this is how we can design a dependent LOV stuff using the web adi and other thing is like uh, in from 12.2 onwards you don't need java kind of capability so by just using a table table LOV approach you can just design the dependent LOV so i have not worked on that but i just came across that yeah so hope this helps in understanding the table which is a dependent LOV approach in the web adi thank you